uh, we're going to create a simple MongoDB and GraphQL server using Express and using MLab. Since I think it's easier and it's better for it to stay online, I just created a thing in um, MLab, which is free if you use it for like simple projects and stuff. So you can create an account on MLab or you can just use your, um, your local MongoDB, whatever you prefer. And I'm going to show you what I have right now, which is, I'm, I can close this tab, which is an error. Okay, so let's start here. Okay, so uh, basically in the index right now, all, all that I have is I'm including Express, I'm including Body Parser, and uh, Mongoose. So basically I have already done this. My stuff is in the end file, and I'm requiring that env. If you ever wonder how people do this, because like I did, you just gotta install that env and then create an m file and it automatically does the thing. Okay, so uh, I think the first step that we need to do since we're using Express is to set up two endpoints, okay? So one for GraphQL and one for GraphQL. So first thing we need to do is open up a new terminal and we need to install a couple of things. So we need to install GraphQL tools. So we are add and I'm going to copy paste this. So GraphQL tools, that is what you're going to use. This is from the awesome Apollo team. We're going to install GraphQL, obviously, and we're also going to install Apollo server, uh, Apollo, Apollo server express, which is again, by the amazing team at Apollo. And this will allow us to connect express and Apollo and everything of that together. So while this installs, I'm just going to tell you that we're going to create like, okay, that was pretty fast. Okay, so we're going to create like awesome talks where you're going to put in some cool talks and some GraphQL awesomeness code is going to come out. So, uh, we already set up the port and we already set the app to be express. So now the first thing that we need to do is set, tell, the, tell the app to use and we're going to say it at GraphQL. Uh, we want to use the body parser, first of all. So let me just close this and give it this. And so, first of all, we want to use the body parser and we want to set it to JSON. And next, this is where we actually need to import things. So we need to import GraphQL Express. Okay, so uh, let me, first of all, import GraphQL Express. I don't think this is how you write it. So GraphQL, no, this is GraphQL Express express from and we need to import it from the Apollo server express so Apollo server express and there we go so let me just make sure that this is how you write it so GraphQL express yeah this is how you write it so and in here we got to use the GraphQL express so basically now we're gonna open up GraphQL express and then here, what we're going to do is pass it the schema, which we still don't have. So I just have a, uh, an empty folder, uh, an empty file in here, that's schema.js. So I'm just going to import it here as schema. So, and it's nothing, but import schema from. That is the next thing that we're going to do, um, schema.js. OK, there we go. So we got that. And um, we also need to tell it the context of this. So. The thing is, we don't have a context yet, so I'm just going to set it to null. The context is basically what you want to do. No, that doesn't make any sense. Wait, so let me just type context here, if I can type. So the context is null. Okay, so what the fuck is the context now? Okay, so the context is, in this case, the talk. So we're going to have a list of talks, and in this case, what we want to pass it as the context is the talk. If you have multiples, multiple stuff in it, you can pass multiple stuff in it. So in this case, the context is the talk. So I'm just going to like do the same thing, but the f for graphic graphy QL express. So I need to import it here since it only needs like an I in here. So how did I, how did I screw that one up? Okay. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to be app that I use. And this one doesn't take a second parameter. So I'm just going to graphy graphy. That's not good. Graphy QL. And this, close it. And in here, we just want to pass it the endpoint URL. So endpoint URL, oh, thank you so much. And the endpoint URL is this URL. 
So, are we okay? An unword graphic UL. Okay, that's that makes perfect sense. Let me just add this word to the dictionary real fast. Otherwise, it's gonna start appearing. So if I go here and start, this will probably tell me to screw over. Exactly. So, unexpected token. What? Oh, okay. That was my bad. Okay, so, unexpected token again. Am I missing closing one? Yes, I am. Okay, is everything okay now? Okay, it's running on port 3000. Okay, now it's not running on port 3000. Okay. So, because this is already running here. Okay, so, it's running on port 3000, but what do we have on port 3000? So, if I go to GraphQL, there we go. We got this, which is an HTML error, because I don't have a GraphQL schema. Okay, so the first thing that I think we should start with is not the schema. I think the first thing that we should start with is by defining our, Mon our MongoDB model. So for our talk. So the first thing that we need to do is import Mongoose. So import Mongoose from Mongoose. And define our schema. So I'm just going to const talk. This is going to be the this is going to be the context as you see. So Mongoose, that's that model. And we're gonna name it talk again. And in here, we pass it the schema that we want. Okay, so first of all, we need to think about the fields that we want to have in this. Let me just export this as default. So default talk. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is have the name. So the name of the talk, so this is a string. Then I wanna have the conference name, conference name that the talk actually happened in, because that's important. I want to have the video, which is also going to be a string. Uh, I want to have the number of votes that this conference, that this that this talk has on the web page. So votes, it's going to be an int. Oh uh, yeah, you don't call it int here. You call it number. Next thing is you need a description. So description, is that okay? I think it is. And uh, this is obviously going to be a string. We need the speaker name. Speaker, get out. Speaker name, which is also a string, and finally we need the date. And in the date, I'm gonna pass it as the type date. Which, if you want to continue with this idea, it allows for a lot of like cool little stuff, which are, like in the last six months, stuff like that. Okay, so now here in our index, we can actually import our context, which is talk. Cool stuff, right? Okay, so let's start by let put this at the bottom and let me give it a space here and import talk from a schema no from um, model .js. Okay, so it still doesn't work. Obviously, we still got an error in GraphQL. Well, actually, our server died. Uh, the app crashed. I don't know why this keeps happening. Like, it keeps telling me that port three thousand is in use. Like, I know it's in use. You're using it. Like, yeah, see what I mean? Did this one try and do things like, yeah, okay, so that's because I had two of them running. That was not a very smart move on me. Okay, so there we go. So the next thing that I think we should do is create our schema. Okay. So let's go to this file called schema.js. Let me just open this again. And as you can see, we still have an error. But we got ourselves a model. So we know exactly what we want here. We know that we want to talk. That's going to have a name, a conference name, a video, votes, description, speaker name, and a date. And now we got to create the schema for this. And for the schema, we're going to just export default. And we're going to do these pretty little things. And the first thing that we need to define is how the talk is structured. So we need to define the type talk. And this type talk is going to have an ID that's going to be automatic by uh, MongoDB. And this ID is going to be a string. It's also going to have, like, we can come over here to the um, model.js and just like, copy this so that we don't forget what we're supposed to do. It's also going to have, like, most of this can just be copied over here. Oops. Nope. You're not. You're, you're not going to do that, boy. Okay. So. Uh, in this case, it's not, a, it's not a number, it's an int. We also have to delete all of this. 
And in this case, it's a string and not a date. And this is our type talk. Okay, so we have something. We have the type of a talk that's defined in GraphQL. Do we still have an error here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, because we have not like used our schema for anything. And um, next thing that I think we should do is create the query. So we should have at least one query that we need to do and like it gets all the talks. So type query and we're going to open up them curly braces and I'm going to call it all talks. And this is going to, uh, this is going to return a talk. No, it's going to return an array of talks. Sorry about that. And okay, there we go. So this is just a plain simple query, the most simple query that you can do, but it serves our purpose right now. So now let's create a resolver. And but what is a resolver, by the way? So a resolver is basically, uh, so you're getting all talks. Okay, cool. Uh, GraphQL doesn't know what the fuck that is. GraphQL has to resolve what you're trying to get to actual data that's on the MongoDB server. And how do we do that? We do that with the help of, of like awesomeness and mongoose and gra and um, mongodb so i'm going to export default this is going to be a couple of functions okay the way the reason why we're doing this so cleanly is because we're using graphql tools and in a while you're going to have this awesome thing that's like make executable schema which basically just takes these functions that i'm going to write in here and what i wrote in the other one which is just text and uh, it's going to give you an executable schema so we just have one for the query, right? We don't have any mutations yet. We'll be adding some. And our thing is called all talks. So we're going to create an async function because we need to get stuff from the database, okay? So we need to kind of make it async. And this function receives a parent, receives the args that you pass into it. So basically, if you want to search for a particular talk with a certain ID, you could do that. And it deconstructs the talk that we get. Okay, so let's close this and Let's create a pretty little function here. And the first thing that we need to do is like const talks. And this talks is equal to away because we're using async. And we're going to go talk.find. And what this is going to do to us is going to return us all the talks that are in the database. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is so basically the way that MongoDB works is the ID is not really a string. So now we're going to like map all the talks. So talks.map and we get a talk. And out of this talk, um, we want to say that talk.id uh, is equal to talk.id. Um, so we want to say that talk.id is equal to talk.id.2 string. Okay, so that is pretty much all that we need to do. Okay, so give it that space and we get ourselves a resolver. So let's go over to our index.js and actually call both these things. So the first thing that we need to do is actually call, so import make executable schema, make exit. I'm going to copy this guys. I'm sorry, but I cannot type this. I just, I just cannot type this. Okay, there we go. And now uh, we're going to like say that make executable schema. Let's do it over here. So const const schema is equal to make executable schema. And this is going to get two parameters. It's going to get the type definitions, and we should call it schema so that it didn't match the thing down there. But now we're going to call it types. So this is going to get type defs, type uh, defs, and that's going to be equal to types. And then it's also going to get the resolvers that we need to import. So import resol resolvers from nope resolvers.js and this is also going to get the resolvers and that is it so now let's reload this page and it's unable to connect because there's probably an error somewhere uh okay so that that makes sense wait 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 wait, wait. what is that that's in the schema do you still have an error no, we don't. Amazing. Okay, and we don't have an error here anymore. And now, as you can see, we have all talks here. 
So let me just create a simple query. So all talks. Can I read property find of undefined? That is pretty sweet, right? I don't know. I don't I don't really don't know what happened. Okay, so the problem was that I called talk like this and I need to call it like this. It needs to be like a part of the object because you can have multiple in it. And now if I reload the page, you get that all talks are empty. Okay. So that is not a very useful thing, right? So let's create a mutation that will allow us to actually add talks so that we can actually like see anything in the page, I guess. Okay, so first thing that we need to do is that we're going to define the schema for our mutation. So I'm going to say type mutation. I'm going to open them curly brackets and I'm going to call this create talk. And this is the arguments that it's going to take and then it's going to return me a talk. Okay. So what are the arguments? The arguments are pretty much everything that is in here. There is no name here. But the arguments are pretty much everything that's in here. So let's copy over this. And let's say that what I what I really need you to give me in this talk is that I really need a string guy. I really need a name. I don't really need a conference name. I really need a video. I don't really need the votes. Actually, you cannot pass the votes. The description is not mandatory as well, and I really need the speaker name. Uh, I don't really need the date, so that's fine. Okay, so we created this mutation, and now we actually need to resolve this mutation. So let's commit to the resolvers, and this is for the query. So now we need to create one for mutation. And we're going to call it the exact same name we called it in the schema. So create talk. And this is also going to be an async function that is going to take exactly the same thing. So parent, it's going to take the args and it's going to deconstruct here the talk. Let me close this and call this function. Okay, so what do we need to do here? Uh, we need to actually create a new talk and save that new talk. So const talk is going to be equal to a way and we're going to call the talk. We're going to call sorry new talk and we're going to pass it all of the args that we got and we're going to save it. So this will save it to the database and now we need to talk and we need to make that that ID basically be a string. So this is just it. So after that is done, we need to pass, how did I not call it to string? There we go. So to string. So now that this is done, we just return the talk. So with Mongoose, this is actually a very easy task because it's really easy to get stuff and insert stuff. So basically just say new talks, you pass in all of the args that you got and you save it. And that is like super easy. Okay. So. Let's reload this page and see if we still have no errors. Okay, no errors. So let's call a mutation on this. And we only have one mutation, so it's create talk. Yeah. And and after this, I want to return the name of the talk and I want to return this speaker name. Okay. So now I'm going to copy stuff. So I'm going to pass it the name. Oop. So name, which is going to be composition, I really like this talk. So the speaker name is going to be Nick Graf. The video is going to be something that I did not copy. So YouTube, Nick Graf, composition, there we go. Oh, didn't get like a weird lot of stuff in my search bar. That's cool. And uh, I'm also going to put in the date. And the date needs to be passed in this format. So it's in on May 18, so 18, 05, and 2017. And this is what I have. There's no description. Just the shit. No, dude. Did he save it? Oh my god, it totally did. Okay, God bless Rafael. Uh, so I'm passing it the name. Let me just do this so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. So I think I'm passing all of the required fields. So I'm passing a name that is composition, speaker name Nick Craft video and date. Oh, let me also pass the conference name because I know it. So conference name is react Europe. Okay. And let's try this talk validation failed date gas for value. So it's not like this. So it's 1805 about date 
So basically, this is not how you pass a date, which is not cool. So is this like so? It's probably like zero five eighteen because of the Americans. And there we go. So we created a talk. Let's see if it actually worked. Yeah, it was eighteen. Yeah, it was was the Americans. I get it. Okay, so all talks, and now uh, there we go. So it has the votes are null and the description is null. But we get all of the rest of the stuff. And as you can see, since I passed it in like such a cool way, since so I passed it as a date, we also get like Thursday. It was a Thursday, May 18, 2017. We can also pass the hour if you want, but I don't think you want to get like that far. I don't think there's like any need for it. Okay, so what is the next thing that we want to do? So the first thing, the next thing that I really want to do is get one talk. So. You pass the ID of the talk that you want, and you get that one talk. So, how do we do that? Okay, so let me just call it get talk. And this is also going to be an async. That is going to... Okay, I'm just going to copy this. I copy a lot of stuff when I'm coding, because I don't know why in my head it's actually faster, when in real life it's just, it's just not. Nah. And I'm going to go const talk equals away talk dot find and what I need to do here is pass it the ID that we pass it in the arguments so I'm assuming that when we, when you want to get a talk you're gonna shit okay so you're gonna do something like this and then you're gonna say ID and you're gonna pass it the ID so let me just copy this ID over here just to make sure that I don't lose it so and I want to pass args dot ID and then I just want to return the talk so I actually don't need this this time I just need this. So get talk. Well, actually, I do need this. So I need to return the talk after it's done. So return talk. Okay, so basically, it will wait until it finds it. If it doesn't, it's just going to give us an error. If it does, it's going to return us the talk. But we're not to find this in our schema. So now there's an error. So there's a query for all talks. And now we need a query for get talk, which is going to take an ID which is a string. Okay, bar 3000, amazing. So let me copy this ID again. And let me just, oh, okay, I've already done this, so that's fine. And get this and unknown argument ID. In mm, let me just reload this because it's not get, it's get talk and pass it the ID. Parameter filter to find must be an object. Oh, that's because I didn't, I kind of screwed up on that one. Okay, so I did string. Uh, let me come here to the schema. It's I did string. Oh, I also forgot to make this like you need to pass this. Otherwise, yeah. And I need to come here to the resolvers and so await talk that find by ID. Sorry guys. So find by ID, which is like this, and then you save it. Sorry about that. We're also gonna use find. So now I'm gonna reload this because I kind of screwed up on this one again. <laughs> so schema and I'm expecting this, but it's not this, it's this. It's just a talk, it's not an array of talks. And network error. And now we got the talk. So what happens if I just pass random stuff here? Cast object ID failed for value at pass ID for model talk. Okay, that's a very pretty name, right? We're gonna create a new tutorial uh, in a while, which is gonna be like, give, give me pretty names, guys. Okay. So what is a search thing would be fucking amazing, right? So basically, what if, what if, like, hang on with me right now. What if I could go to all talks and just pass the name Nick Graf, Nick Graf, and that will return all of the talks that are, uh, not the name, so the speaker name, sorry about that, speaker name, and that will return me all of the talks that Nick Graf has taught. Okay, so this is actually not hard because we have the same names of stuff in our database as we have in our um, in our GraphQL schema. It's actually very easy to do this. So let's think about what we want to search for. So we want to search for the name, and this is going to be a string. So we're passing this as arguments like we did here. It's obviously not going to work as soon as I do this. But So we want to search by the name. We also, also could want to search by the conference name. So conference name which is also going to be a string none of this are is 
mandatory because it doesn't make a lot of sense for it to be mandatory. A person can get all the talks or can get like a single talk like this. You can also search for the speaker name. So speaker name, which is also going to be a string. I don't think it makes sense to search for the description or the video, so we're just gonna stay like this, and I'm gonna save this. And you're like, okay, that's cool, Sarah, but that's still gonna give you an error. And you know what? Oh, okay, it does because that's the only thing that I have, so if I do something else, it still returns me the same thing. I was like, what? I didn't need to do the second part, come on! Okay, so let's just create a new talk to... Okay, so, mutation. And I'm gonna be like, create talk and i'm gonna be like name let me just copy this pretty name that i have here so i want you to contribute to open source there we go okay so that's the name uh the date is so august is 08 24 of 2017 speaker name is max Stoiber. Oh, oh god damn it I, I did nail it and uh do, what am i missing the video is something that i currently do not have so I'll just put this in my search query there we go so i want you to contribute to open source this is the video and the conference name is react rally so let me just do this and now we got two okay so if I go back here, and I didn't even know Control Z worked here. Seriously, that is awesome. So all talks, and the speaker name is Nick Graf. Does it matter? No, it still returns me the one that is from Max Toyberg. Okay, so let's make it matter. Okay, so we, in our resolvers, we just say find. So basically, what the resolver is, what we're saying is like find all of the stuff. But if we pass it the args, it's gonna send an object which is gonna say something like name, and name equals something. So that's all that we need to do. And uh, Mongoose or MongoDB will automatically do the like, select this where name equals something. So all we gotta do, really, like it's that easy, is just pass ours. And now, if I reload this and try, there was a network error, there's still, what happened dude? What did I do? I didn't do anything. So let me try again, and we get, Nothing, because that's probably not his name. Okay. So let me do this. Oh, that's because there's a syntax error. Oh, I, I wrote Nick Graf's name wrong. Okay, I'm so sorry, Nick. So, not name, but speaker name. This is not auto control because I didn't do the thing for that. Okay! And we nailed it, right? And now the next thing that you could do is by like, you can search by conference name. And if I say uh, React Europe, it's gonna show us Nick Graf's talk. Again, but we do have a votes thing that is just null. What if you wanna upvote a talk? So what, what do we wanna do? We wanna create a mutation, let me just sketch it out here and we want to create a mutation that's like upvote talk and it's going to get an id of the talk like this and basically let me just return the votes this doesn't exist so it's going to give me an error do you mean a vote talk what what are you talking about and we're going to send it an id and it's going to upvote that talk basically so first thing we got to do is the schema and it's really easy mutation, so all we could do is up. Let me just copy up for talk, otherwise, I'm gonna screw it up. So, up for talk, this is gonna get an ID which is mandatory and it's gonna return us a talk. So, it's literally this, it's literally the same thing. So, what does this mean? We send an ID and then we gotta do the resolver thing where we find that by if we find that talk by ID. Then we set the, the, the value of the vote to plus one ever, one, whenever the hell it is in there. And then we return that talk. So let's go here to the resolvers. And we want to add a new mutation. And that mutation needs to have a comma here. And it's upvote talk. Oh, didn't I copy that? No, I didn't. 
I uncopy it. So upvote talk. And this is as well as my sync. It's also going to get the parent, the args we sent him. Uh, but I actually just want the ID out of this args and we want to talk. That is also deconstructed from the thing. Okay, and then we returned. Okay, so the first thing that we needed to do is get that talk by ID. So it's exactly the same thing as we do here. So we need to get that talk by ID, but it's not args.id, it's ID. No, we actually need to send it as our. No, that's okay. Let's send it as find by ID, and we just send the ID that we passed. And then with this talk, what we want to do is say, I want to set. And what do we want to set? We want to set the votes to like talk that votes plus one, right? Okay, cool. But what if it's null? Because we haven't done anything that says, okay, that's cool and all, but I didn't send me anything, so I'm going to default to zero. It's just defaulting to null. So we got to check if talk that votes. If there is, we do this. If there isn't, we just set it to one, which I think makes perfect sense. And then we got to save it. So await talk.save, which is talk.save is basically this. So it's the talk that we got. And then we want to return the talk. Okay, so now let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And then it works. So upvote talk, and we got votes one, two. And now if I go to all talks, and I return this, we get that this one has a vote of three, and this one votes are null. So that was pretty cool. So that is pretty much what I have for now. And we're just going to go over this one more time. So the first thing that I did was connect to the Mongo MongoDB database. Then I could just call this type devs because that would make it prettier here. And then we made a, an executable schema out of the type definitions, which is here in our schema. So we defined that the type talk has an ID, which is a string. It has a name, a conference name, and a video that are all strings. Description, speaker name, and date are also strings, and it has a votes, which is an int, a nullable int. And then we define that the query that we can have, we're going to have an all talks query. Oh, we should have a space here. Yeah. We're going to have an all talks query that can actually receive something. So it can actually receive a name. So the name of the talk, it can actually receive a conference name or a speaker name, which would be really useful if you want to do searches in your web app. So if, if someone is at like speaker slash micraf, and you just want to, you send this query as speaker name equals whatever it is in your header, and that's done. And we also created a get talk by ID and a create talk mutation, which has some fields that are uh, mandatory and some fields that aren't. And you have the, you can also have an upvote talk. And how is this magic performed? <laughs> all talks just finds all the talks. And if you pass it any arguments, it sends the arguments back to MongoDB and search with those arguments. Then we have to do this little snazzy thing where we map over the talks and return the talk that ID, but in a string way. Uh, how do we get the talk? How do we get one talk? You find talk by ID and you pass it. Let me just do the same thing that I did in the bottom because that actually makes more sense. You deconstruct from the arguments the ID just in case that somebody passes something else, like it's gonna give you an error, but just in case you deconstruct the ID, you pass the ID at talk.findById, and that's it. Or you save things, you just call the talk, you send it all of the arguments, and you save it, and you upvote a talk by finding it by ID, setting the vote to the number of votes that it had plus one, or setting it to one if it doesn't have any votes yet, and then you return the talk. In the index, all that we did as well was like, as gra and when, when you get GraphQL, use the body parser as JSON so that we can get JSON data back instead of just getting weird stuff. And call GraphQL Express, pass in the schema that is right here. That is the thing that we made executable using uh, make executable schema from GraphQL tools. Because if you don't do it like this, you got to define the schema in a GraphQL way, which is a lot more cumbersome. So I decided to go with this way because I think it's way more simpler. Uh, I've also made it the other way around, but I think this way is just way more simpler. It makes more sense because, so basically, this is how you write schemas. This is how you write uh, type definitions 
in uh, Apollo. So this is how you're used to doing it in the front end. So it helps a lot that you do it the same way in the back end as well. And we tell that the context is the talk. And we tell it, okay, use GraphQL, use GraphQL Express and set the endpoint to something. So you can actually set this endpoint. So basically if you want to fake it, you just set this endpoint to like GraphQL and basically fake that you did it. Okay, so then the app listens at this port and then you hit console, uh, console yes, queen. That is pretty much it. So this is our model and we did a pretty cool thing. So we can get all the talks. We can also get it by ID. So let me get this one. So get talk and we pass it the ID and then we get all the stuff. Okay, so basically I don't want the description of the votes so I can just get this. I can even just get like the name and you got a fully functional GraphQL schema, you got a GraphQL server, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So it's, I think the only thing that's left to do is like, I came here and I try to deploy it. So if I type now, it's magically going to deploy it because this is basically literally just a uh, JavaScript. So all that it's going to do is install it and then start it because it's using Babel node to start it. So that's it. It actually started. And it crashed. Oh, authentication failed. Yeah, I need to send my authentication credentials. Okay, but that's it. So I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you guys again next time.